Hello and welcome to a video from filmsbychris.com. That's Chris with the K. Today we're going to be talking about doing some pretty cool things with our phones. Uh, this is a rooted device and we are going to be doing things that require root on your phone. I'm not going to go over how to root your phone in this video. I've done that before. It's super easy if you can unlock the bootloader on your device, which just depends on your manufacturer. Motorola, super simple to do. I use Magisk. It is a great, easy way to do a systemless, I think is what it's called, uh, basically, it modifies your boot partition to give you root, and you can turn it on and off as needed. But everyone should have their phone rooted. That's my view. A lot of people disagree, but there's certain things that you can do when your phone's rooted that you can't do otherwise. There's so many things out there that, oh, I want to do this, and they're like, install this app. You want to do this, install this app. We have to remember, and people will argue with me on this again, that your phone, you're, if you're running Android, you are running a Linux device. And if you understand Linux and the core tools, there's nothing you can't do on this if your device is rooted, okay? So when I say this, I say this all the time, BusyBox, learn BusyBox. BusyBox is this small little binary file, one to one and a half megabytes, maybe even smaller, depending on what tools you can uh, uh, compile into it because you can modify it as you want. But the full thing is like one and a half megabytes and it's on a lot of devices, but it's also very easy to put on devices. We're not gonna really use it too much today. Uh, we're gonna be using some just basic commands, but I do have BusyBox installed on here. But if you learn how to use those basic tools that are in BusyBox, 99% of the things you do with your computer can be done with BusyBox. You can script things out. And if you can do that, that means any Linux device, or really even Windows and Mac devices, because you can install these tools on, on those as well. If you have a root or administrator access on it, there's nothing you can't do. Today, what we're going to do is we're going to make this LED up here, turn on, and we're going to make the phone vibrate using the shell. Okay, the, again, you could use apps, but why install all these apps when your phone can already do almost everything you need to do without having to install an app just by scripting it out? That is the power of being a programmer and that's what you are. Let's go ahead and jump right in. I have adb into my phone. Again, also I'm using ADB, which means I'm just using the default shell on the Android device. There's a lot of stuff you can do using uh, Termux. Termux is amazing, has built-in tools. The stuff we're going to do today, you can do without root access. But I'm showing you this, that in case you just have an Android device, you don't have Termux installed, you just want to use the default tools on here. Again, particular things we're doing today, you need to be, have root access to. You can do without any of those other tools, but Termux is awesome. will make things a lot easier. But even without Termux, this is a Linux system. Let's go ahead and go into a sys folder and class. I've done videos on this before. In this directory, you'll find a lot of the hardware for your device. Things like LEDs, which is what we're gonna mess with today, and, and also the motor to cause your phone to vibrate. Once I go into sys class, I can list things out here. A lot of list of things, we're looking at LEDs and the vibrator is considered an LED because it just powers on and off basically the same way. So we're gonna go into LED. So. We're in now in sys class LEDs. We list this out. We have a couple things. Also, if you brick your device, uh, don't blame me. Really, there's nothing you can't do. If once your bootloader is unlocked, if you were to mess things up, as long as you have your personal files backed up, flash the system anytime you want. But we have a few different things here. We have a device. I'm not sure what this is. It ends in BL. Maybe it has to do with Bluetooth. I don't know. We have charging. And then we have two that start off MMC. I wouldn't mess with those because MMC uh, might have something to do with your hard or your your flash drive on here, your hard drive and your partitions. So probably may not want to mess with those, although I'll look into a little bit more in the future. And we have our vibrator. Let's start with charging. Let's go in here. I'll go CD charging. We list out what's in here. And it's normal things you'll see on any Linux system for devices, especially LEDs. You have a thing, if I was to cut out uh, brightness, it will it'll show you current brightness is set to zero. If we want to know what the max brightness is, we can cut out max brightness, which is 255, which is common. You know, you have different levels on how bright the LED is. Um, and then we have things like power and trigger. If we were to cut out power here, it actually just gives a list. Um, sorry, power is a folder, so you can't cut it out. Um, so forget that. What Really what we want here is the trigger. So if I was to cut out what trigger is right now, it's that's going to show. I've messed up this tutorial. <laughs> no, I'm going to keep going. I'm going to keep going. Uh, so trigger, my, my mind got mixed up on what file is which. So trigger, the only thing I can think looking at this is maybe this is a list of times where the LED comes on. Like if the battery is full or the battery starts charging or the battery charging blink, full, solid USB online. I'm not 100% sure. The trigger you might think turns on off. I think that's a list of things that might turn on and off. Probably could Google this. 
don't really care. Let's look at brightness again. That was set to zero. So I clear the screen here real quick. If we cat or echo 255 into bright, so let me bring my phone up here. Might be a little hard to, oh, look, <laughs> you're seeing that. That's not the LED we're messing with. That's actually an infrared LED. That's probably used for when you put your the phone to your face, it turns the screen off. It's sensing uh, the that, that something's there. That's not what we're messing with. But if I put this into brightness, there you go. Next to it, we just turned on that LED. And if we want to turn it off, we can set it back to zero. And again, we knew the max brightness because the file max brightness tells us for that device, the max brightness is 255. Uh, we go somewhere in the middle, 10, and now it's on, it's, it's not quite as bright. If we go back up to 255, we can make it full brightness or turn it off. So that's turning on and off an LED. I've done videos on this before on desktop computers, turning on and off the hard drive LED or the LED on the top of my ThinkPad or for the power button. And they're just things you can turn on and off. Uh, but if I go back out and I go into uh, the Sys class LEDs and I go into the Vibrate, uh, sorry, CD Vibrator, uh, and I list out what's in here. You can see we have also different things. We have max brightness, so we can cat that out. Max brightness is 100 for this. If we cat out brightness, currently it's at zero. Uh, and then we also have other things like state. Let's cat that out. Current state is zero, which means it's probably off. If you need to check whether it's on off, that might be a good place to do. We can also check the brightness. Let's go ahead and cat out activate. Activate is set to zero. So first thing I want to do is let's go echo 100 and try putting that into brightness and let's see if the phone vibrates. Nope, nothing happened. If I cat out brightness, it's already set back to zero. So I set that it's something, it, it just cleared it out right away. So again, our other options are the activate. And again, if I cat that out, it is set to zero. If, it's set to, if we want on and off, it's gonna be zero or one usually. So let's go ahead and echo one into activate. I don't know if you'll hear this. I'll put it right up to the microphone. You probably didn't hear that. It vibrated, but just for like a 10th of a second. Okay, so if I run it a couple times, every time I do that, the phone was very short. Now, I don't know if there's a way in here to set it to stay on. Uh, but let's go ahead, clear the screen, and just create a simple for loop. So I'm going to say for i in, and I'm not using, if I echo out dollar sign zero, you can see I, it, I'm not using bash, so I can't use the regular curly braces for bash expressions. So normally I would say in, and I would do uh, this, I would say zero dot dot 10, and do a loop, and that would loop from zero through 10. We don't have that, but that's okay, because we have the seq, the sequence command. Uh, so I'm gonna just do a little back ticket ticks here. I'm gonna say seq, I'm gonna say zero, 10. That will go from zero to 10, and if I say do and done, I'm gonna make a little loop here. I'm gonna say echo one, and then I am going to put that into well, if I just do that, it's just going to echo one 10 times, okay? Do it again, and this time I'm gonna pipe the end of that into activate. Okay, I felt the phone vibrate once. Well, it did it, but it did it super fast, so let's go ahead and set a delay. I don't need a long delay. Like I said, it's on for about a 10th of a second, so let's just sleep for uh, point, point 0.1. Let's try that. Ho-ho. It's going. Actually, let's bump it down to a hundredth of a second. That's felt like a normal vibration, like when you plug in your phone or whatever it does when it vibrates. Let's go ahead and increase this number up. So let's set it to 50. Now, since it's a longer vibration, you might be able to hear it in the microphone. I don't know, but I, I promise you the phone is vibrating. So again, we're just looping, and there might be a better way to do this, but it doesn't matter because I've, I, I've got it working, and I could put this in a script, and under certain situations, certain conditions, I can have the phone vibrate, right? And I don't need any third-party tools. So for I in sequence, we're gonna loop 50 times. Each time we're gonna echo zero and sleep for a hundredth of a second. And we're gonna then take that output of echo uh, 50 times at one hundredth of a second into the activate. I hope you guys can hear that. We made our phone vibrate without any third-party tools, right? just with tools that are already built into the device that are on any Linux device. 
and we just use common knowledge of how Linux systems work, because again, it is a Linux device. It's running the Linux kernel. Yeah, the file system's a little funny. It's using a different desktop than you're used to. It is a Linux device, and if you think of it like that, and you know how to use those basic tools, learn BusyBox, which we didn't even really use today, but if some of these tools were missing, like if the SEQ command was missing, we could use our BusyBox has that built in. Again, I do have BusyBox. Probably break my phone there. Uh, if I do BusyBox here, it's listing out all these tools. These are all the tools that are built into BusyBox right now on my device. And if I go SC, there, there's the SEQ command, right? Along with a bunch of other ones. So learn these core tools, have a rooted device, and you can do anything without having to install other applications, right? I hate having to install apps to do certain things. Your phone can already do everything you need, basically. You shouldn't have to install very much to get functionality out of it. It should already be able to do most of what you do without installing these other apps. And yeah, I try to only put open source applications on here, but I still have to then trust the developer of that. So it's like there's certain apps, certain things I want to do, and I'm like, oh, there is an app for that. And then I can get it off of F-Droid, and uh, it seems like it's going to do, but do I really know this developer? Do I, I can look through the GitLab page? And, and when it comes to apps, it's like it's all Java-based, and it's like there's folders upon folders and files. So sometimes looking through that, to make sure it's not malicious is difficult. But if I can just write my own bash script using basic knowledge of Linux, isn't that, isn't that a better thing to do? I could set a process in the background when the phone starts and have my own script monitor things and do what I want and I have no restrictions that Google or anybody else wants to place on me. Anyway, I thank you for watching. Visit filmsbychris.com. That's Chris the K. There's a link in the description. As always, I hope that you have a great day.